standard solutions, titrations, and a little bit about oxalic acid. A standard solution is a solution of known concentration. To calculate the concentration of a solution, you are often given the mass of the substance and the volume to which the solution is made up. Example, calculate the concentration of an oxalic acid solution if 15,75 grams of oxalic acid crystals are dissolved in 250 centimeters cubed of water. First of all, I'm going to speak a little bit about oxalic acid. You need to know the following. Oxalic acid is a weak diprotic acid. I've given you the molecular structure here. It's a dicarboxylic acid where you have two carbon atoms with a carboxyl group on each carbon. So there are just two hydrogens in this molecule. Both hydrogen ions can be donated. Hence, it's a diprotic acid. It is a weak acid. It doesn't give off these hydrogen ions very easily. When it gives off both hydrogen ions, remember the hydrogen ion leaves and then it, it's the hydrogen atom leaves the electron behind on the remaining part of the molecule. So we end up with an oxalate ion, C2O4, two minus. These two minuses are the electrons from the hydrogen ions that got left behind from the hydrogen atoms that left. So the hydrogen ion leaves when it acts as an acid and leaves the electron behind on the remaining part of the molecule. If just one hydrogen is donated, we are left over with a hydrogen oxalate ion with the other hydrogen and only a um, negative one. So if both hydrogen ions are donated, there's your oxalate ion. If just one hydrogen ion is donated, we are left with a hydrogen oxalate ion. Oxalic acid can be written in any of these four ways. Please remember as well that oxalic acid has two water molecules of crystallization and water of crystallization is always written with a dot and then the number indicating how many water of crystallization molecules there are. So the molecular mass always includes the water of crystallization. You add the molar mass or molecular mass of the water molecules, you do not multiply them. This little dot does not mean multiply. So they gave us some information that we have 15,75 grams of oxalic acid crystals. This is the equation of the data sheet that you will use to calculate your concentration. We can work out the exact concentration because we have the mass, the molar mass, and the volume. Remember, the volume has to be in decimeters cubed when you use this equation because concentration is in moles per decimeter cube. So we end up with a concentration of 0 0,5 moles per decimeter cube. This is now a standard solution because we have the exact concentration of the oxalic acid. Now we're going to talk about the titration. This solution of oxalic acid is now titrated against a solution of sodium hydroxide. Sodium hydroxide is a strong base. So we have a weak acid with a strong base. Oxalic acid is going to be in our burette and the sodium hydroxide will be in the Erlenmeyer flask or the conical flask. You have to know which indicator to use. When we have a strong base and a weak acid, phenolphthalein is the indicator of choice. Our volume will have a known base. We are going to use a pipette to put the exact amount of base into the conical flask. Then you add your indicator to the conical flask, in this case it's phenolphthalein. Your burette will be zeroed at the top with the oxalic acid, so we're going to titrate oxalic acid into the base. Phenolphthalein is pink in a base and colorless in an acid. So initially it will be base, the base with the phenolphthalein will be pink, and then when one drop of acid changes this indicator to colorless, we know that we have reached the end point of our titration. We are going to do three burette readings, so we can use the average of the three burette readings so that our answers will be more accurate. The average is used of the three readings. This reaction is called a neutralization reaction because the end point has reached, it has been completely neutralized. Please note, not all your reactions in exam questions will be neutralization reactions. 
Right, I've given the balanced equation for this reaction. Firstly, with the water of crystallization attached to the oxalic acid molecule. So two hydrogen ions are donated. So we need two sodium hydroxide particles. We will form sodium oxalate and four water molecules. The water comes from the two hydrogen ions that are attached to two hydroxide ions. That gives me two water molecules. And then these two water molecules make four water molecules on the right-hand side. Or you can write the reaction as follows. Without the water of crystallization, your two hydrogen ions are donated. They bond to the two hydroxide ions to form two water molecules. The only difference between these two reactions is you have your two water of crystallization molecules here. So you will have two more water molecules on the right hand side. So the first one is with the water of crystallization and the second one is without the water of crystallization. Now in our titration, 25 centimeters cubed of sodium hydroxide was pipetted out and then according to our Barrett readings, 22,25 centimeters cubed of oxalic acid was used. We know the concentration of oxalic acid. We calculated that initially. Remember, square brackets mean concentration. Calculate the concentration of the sodium hydroxide solution now. So your first option, because we had a neutralization reaction, we can use this neutralization equation, which is on your data sheet as well. You can only use this equation if neutralization takes place, if an end point was reached. We have the concentration of the acid. This is the volume of our acid. This is the volume of the base. And this is the ratio of acid to base. You can put your acid values on top and base at the bottom, or you can swap them around as long as you swap both sides around. So where does this one and two come from? It comes from the reaction one mole of acid will react with two moles of base. So that is the ratio I have here. When you do the calculation, the concentration of the base is 0 0.89 moles per decimeter cube. So write it neatly using square brackets, 0 0.89 mole per decimeter cubed. We now have the exact concentration of the sodium hydroxide solution. Therefore, the sodium hydroxide solution has been standardized. The other option, you do not have to use the neutralization equation. You can first calculate the number of moles of oxalic acid because we have the concentration and the volume using N is equal to C times V. Remember, you must use decimeters cubed. Concentration was 0 0.5, 22,25 centimeters cubed is the number of decimeters cubed. So, so many moles, 0 0.11125 moles of oxalic acid was used. Use your mole ratio to calculate the number of moles of base that was used. It's double the amount. Now we go back to C is equal to N over V, substitute your values, and you can calculate the concentration of the base. We get the same answer as in the first option. So therefore, your sodium hydroxide concentration is 0 0.89 moles per decimeter cube.